welcome again to everybody. Today is all about diet, but diet, so far as the NCLEX is concerned, is a very broad topic. So <laughs> what we're going to do is that we're going to take a very, very important aspect of diet today. And then we have other subsequent um, classes, which we'll be teaching in the class itself. And also on these um, demo classes about, you know, diet. So today we're going to do something very, very important, all about diet. And today's class is going to focus on therapeutic diets. That's all it's going to focus on. Because therapeutic diet is very, very deep. And we see a lot of candidates struggle with that at times. And so we want to take our time and make sure that we break it down line upon line and get everyone to really appreciate it. Don't forget that I'll be asking volunteers to summarize everything, okay? So after each point, I'll need you to summarize for us. So let's start. Today, we are looking at therapeutic diets. And when I say we are looking at therapeutic diets, um, as I said, diet is very, very broad and it's very confusing for a lot of candidates. So today we are going to take it in bits and we are going to start with therapeutic diet. And two classes, we look at dietary indications which, which are required for this diet. But for today, we are just looking at therapeutic diets. Um, so we're just going to get into the game right away. We're going to start with nil per us. Nil per us is what it is. And I think every nursing student and every practicing nurse understands this very, very well. Nil per us. Nil per us means no food, no drink, nothing. You know, nothing. Nothing is going into the, um, the client's GI tract. And someone may ask, you know, when we say nil per us, what do we really mean? It means the client is taking no food, no medication, no water. Nothing will go into the mouth. I mean, nothing. You know, I'm just trying my best to make sure that I emphasize it, I emphasize it, I emphasize it. So that when we see a case of nil per us on our NCLEX, we will know how to deal with it. Now, what are some of the reasons why we keep a client nil per us? Number one, it is to prevent aspiration before surgery. So, for example, if the patient, if the client is going to have, you know, a bowel surgery or something, you want to keep the client nothing by mouth as you prepare the client for that very important surgery. Number two, it's also to give the client some bowel rest. You know, maybe if their bowels have been handled um, because of surgery or something, you want to give the client, you know, some bowel rest so that they 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 get some good rest okay so so that is basically that so that is nil per us for you why do we do nil per us please write it in your books to prevent aspiration and number 2 to have bowel rest and what is aspiration you know when a client you know has eaten and their tummy is full and then the food beats up into the esophagus the person can inhale it into the lungs and that can lead to very, very bad consequences. So we keep clients nil per us, number one, to prevent aspiration, and number two, to have bowel rest. I will not ask anyone to um, summarize this. I'll add the next kind of therapeutic diet before I'll ask for you know a summary. Please, are we all on the same page? I want to know, are we all on the same page? If we got the concept of nil per us very well, so with nil per us, no food, no medication, no water, nothing goes into the mouth. Yes. Can I move on? Awesome. Okay, good. All right, yes. let's go. So now the other um, one we can look at is what we call a clear liquid diet. A clear liquid diet. Remember, we are talking about diet and we are talking about therapeutic diet. So we've looked at nil per us, nothing by mouth, nothing at all. No food, no medication, nothing. To give bowel rest to prevent aspiration. Now let's talk about clear liquid diet. Now, the clear liquid diet, you are giving the client adequate fluid and water. Okay? And you are giving the client about 500 to 1,000 kilocalories of simple sugars and electrolytes. So it should start giving you the idea of, you know, what exactly am I giving a client if I'm giving the client a clear liquid diet? So I see an order to give a client clear liquid diet. What am I really, really giving? Number three, 
it is supposed to be fiber free. No fiber in there. Fiber free. And the essence of this clear liquid diet is basically it serves as, you know, a diet which has no residue or no fiber. Clear liquid diet have no residue or no fiber. Now, how long should clear liquid diet be used? Usually, if you are giving a client clear liquid diet, you are looking at one to two days. Usually, you are looking at one to two days before and after surgery or diagnostic procedures, okay? Because maybe you don't want the patient, the client to tip into hypoglycemia. That is low glucose level. So you may want to give a clear liquid diet. And it can also be given during the acute stages of illnesses, acute stages of illnesses. And um, when you've also had maybe a client who has been kept nail per us, nothing by mouth for some time, and you want to start introducing foods to the client, you can usually start with the clear liquid diet. So we've learned nail per us, we've learned that clear liquid diet looks like a transition from nail per us as the client has had some bowel rest and, you know, to get a, the, the bowels going again. Now, the question is, in your exam, how will you be able to identify examples of clear liquid diets? Examples of clear liquid diets can be gelatin, okay? It can be clear broth. So this is how a broth looks like, the clear broth. It can also be popsicles. So popsicles are like, you know, those sweet, um, frozen, um, sugary, stuff that people take especially after they've had like conselectomies and the rest okay popsicles it can also be apple juice so that's why i put this picture down here you know like apple juice because it's a, you can see through it but you, you it doesn't have any residue as we are learning it can also be cranberry juice or clear carbonated beverages and then it can be tea or coffee with no added milk or milk products so clear liquid diet Examples can be tea, example can be coffee, example can be popsicles, example can be apple juice, example can be clear broth, all right? Gelatin and uh, apple juice. So I want someone to summarize clear liquid diet and nail pair us for me quickly. Yes, okay, I was going to so. say, okay, so uh, clear liquid diet or uh, the MPO, uh, mm -hmm. That's absolutely nothing in mouth. Yeah. Cannot have anything because um, mm -hmm. you don't want to uh, aspirate and you want to rest your bowels. Exactly. The clear liquid diet mm -hmm. is anything <clears throat> that's liquid, mm -hmm. but clear. Yes. Such as gelatin, broth, popsicles, apple juice, and mm -hmm. uh, any carb clear carbonated beverages, Yes. tea and coffee, but no milk. Mm -hmm. And why do we give clear liquid diet? Uh, usually that you said before and after surgery. Beautiful, beautiful. And when you're also transitioning from nothing by mouth, right, to regular diet. Okay. I'm very, I'm very glad we are getting somewhere. So this is how I want the class to go today because, you know, um, with, with this particular topic, there are specific things we need to know for the NCLEX. And that is why we are taking our time to go through it. Okay, sure. So now that we've finished the clear liquid diet, let's look at a full liquid diet. We've done nail per us. We've done clear liquid diet. Now let's look at full liquid diet. So what is the concept of a full liquid diet? For the clear liquid diet, it was clear, like uh, Susan said. But for the full liquid diet, you cannot see through it. You cannot see through the full liquid diet. And the reason why you want to give full liquid diet is to provide water, at times to provide calories, to provide proteins, to provide vitamins, and even dairy products. Remember we learned that, I have a question, if I need to give clear liquid diet to a, a client and I want to give tea, can I add milk? Clear liquid diet. Can I add milk? Please, can I add milk? Yes or no? 
clear liquid diet. Can milk no. exactly, but then when it comes to full liquid diet, you can have milk. And the essence of full liquid diet is to prevent dehydration. Okay, it is also it also contains some residue. So it is it contains residue, but it is a low residue diet, basically. And who should get a full liquid diet? It is clients who have difficulty chewing or swallowing. So please remember, clear liquid diet you can see through it. Nil per us, nothing at all. But full liquid diet you cannot see through it. It can have some residue, but it is low residue. And in a client who is taking full liquid diet, they can take milk. It should contain, you know, some water, some calories, some proteins, some vitamins. All right, and we give it to clients. Who have difficulty chewing or swallowing. Now, who should not get full liquid diet? We've talked about who should get it. But then in your exam, you can also be asked the other one. Who should not get full liquid diet? It is a client who has had a stroke recently. Like, you know, stroke maybe... Two days ago, um, the client's swallowing has been tested and it is found out that this client has issues with their swallowing. You want to be very careful. And when you're thinking about full liquid diet, the reason why I put this picture here is because it's like, you know, this face is transitioning from this pot to that pot. So think about transition when you think about full liquid diet. So full liquid diet can also be a transitional diet like the way clear liquid diet can also be. So first, Learn those who should not get full liquid diet. Learn those who need full liquid diet. Remember that full liquid diet, you can't see through it. Unlike the clear liquid diet. And remember that with full liquid diet, the client can have milk as well. All right? Now, after bowel surgery, usually you give clear liquid diet first before giving full liquid diet. So since we are on the issue of full liquid diet, I want to test your mind on, you know, what we did about clear liquid diet. Can somebody give me two examples of clear liquid diet? And then we come back to full liquid diet because we've learned nothing by mouth, clear liquid diet and full liquid diet. So can you give me examples of clear liquid diets, please? Who try? who try? Chichi. Uh, apple juice and apple juice. Um, broth. Broth, beautiful. And then the, the full liquid diet, you can't see through it. So examples of full liquid diet can be ice cream, puddings, you know, hot cereal, like oatmeal or wheat in liquid consistency, milk, and some opaque juices as well, okay? And you can even give strained soups as well as yogurts and uh, prepared liquid formulas and liquid foods at room temperature. So please, we are building, we are building, we are building. Nothing by mouth, clear liquid diet, full liquid diet. All right, we are learning, we are learning them. And now we've come to the third one, full liquid diet. So um, I know Susan did the first summary. Can somebody summarize clear liquid diet for me and highlight on those who can take clear liquid diet and those who should not take clear liquid diet. I need someone to volunteer and summarize for me, please. <laughs> so um, with the full liquid diet, mm -hmm. it's a diet that um, you cannot see through it. Yes, you can't see through. Okay. And examples can... Um, examples include... Um, Oatmeal, ice cream, yeah, opaque juices, puddings. Beautiful. Yeah. And um clients who have difficulty in chewing. Mm -hmm. okay, and who can should be not take food. who should not take full liquid diet? Who shouldn't? Yes, who shouldn't okay. give full clients, liquid. A client following um stroke. Beautiful. Just actually. Okay. Stroke. Beautiful. So we are building. So please, if I were you, I'll even draw a, 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 a table. Nil per us, clear liquid diet, full liquid diet. Now, we move on to puree diet. Puree diet. 
I hope everyone has clear liquid diet, full liquid diet, and nail per us in the mind. Now, let's talk about puri diet. Puri diet. When you think about puri diet, think about the blender. This is what I, that's why I put this picture there. When you think about puri diet, think about the blender. Think about blended food. And when I say think about blended food, what do I mean? You know, think about the blender. Blender or food processor to change foods into pureed or blended form. So when I think about puree, I'm thinking about like, you know, the blender, which is going to go round and round and make sure that the food gets broken down. You know, the puree diet, essential nutrients in a chopped ground or pureed form. That's what the blender is going to do, okay? And for clients who are unable to chew or swallow, so it is similar to like the kind of clients who need the puree diet are clients who can also take the full liquid diet. But which foods should not be used for puree diets? Number one, raw eggs. Don't use raw eggs for puree diet. Number two, nuts. Because in as much as you want to blend it at times, there may be some consistencies which the client may aspirate. Number three, whole bread. Number four, raw fruits and vegetables. And number five, foods that contain seeds. These are the foods you don't want to use in a pureed diet. Please, should I take it again? Pureed diet. When you think about pureed diet, think about the blender. The blender. The blender. What are the foods we cannot use or we should not use in a pureed diet? Raw eggs, nuts, whole bread, raw fruits and vegetables, and foods that contain seeds. Pureed diets. Which people need pureed diets? People who are unable to chew or swallow. And when you think about pureed diet, think about the reg uh, food which has been blended. That's it. Which clients can get pureed diets? Clients who are unable to chew. Babies. Clients who have dysphagia. And one trick you want to use um, for your clients on the ward, or maybe the client comes for a swallowing stuff, is don't mix the ingredients. So keep them mashed separately. So if it is fruits, keep the fruits separate from the vegetables, you know. Don't mix them up. That's basically that. What food can't we use in pure diets? Raw eggs, nuts, whole bread, raw fruits and vegetables, and foods that contain seed. Who needs pure diet? Clients who cannot swallow or who cannot chew. Clients who have dysphagia, that is um, difficulty swallowing. And then babies. Because remember that when you are transitioning babies from breast milk to, you know, um, regular foods, this is the kind of food you start them with. So they can get used to it before they start eating adult food. So please, I need a volunteer. Um, Susan did full liquid diet. Um, I will do. Anthony, I will do. Okay, sure. Let's go. Yeah, a puree diet uh, means it's a blender of the food uh, to the processor mm -hmm. and uh, purify the blended form. That is puree, puree food. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a puree diet, uh, essential, uh, that is a nutrition and chopper, uh, chopping uh, in the purified form. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, who given to the unable to chew uh, or swallowing the, in the, in the patients, we are giving the puree food, purified food. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, purified food, not uh, using for the purified uh, diet meats, it will be the raw eggs, uh, nuts, wall breads. Mm -hmm. Uh, the which uh, the client the purified that we can get in the uh, it's unable to chew the residents or babies uh, will get the purified uh, in, the, in the in the purified food. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in the purified diet. Uh, don't mix the ingredients. Uh, it's in the uh, in the mashed separate things to the. Don't mix it in the uh, it's the purified diet. Exactly. So purified diet. So we've learned meal per us. Clear liquid diet, full liquid diet, pure diet. Chichi, your hand is up. Please ask your question. 
I wanted to find out why we cannot mash the raw fruits and vegetables. I mean, why we cannot make puree, those things, those uh, items. What is the reason for that? Because they have different consistencies. They have, so like at times you can have vegetables like cabbage, right? And then you take something like orange. In as much as they are raw, they may have different consistencies. So even if you blend, you may not get what you actually need. And at times too, with this period that you want to give specific, specific vegetables to the client, right? Or specific vegetables to the child. And at times too, you realize that some of these fruits and vegetables may also have different pHs, right? So you want to separate them so that you can be able to serve them appropriately to the client. Yeah. Okay, but thank you. One thing you don't want is to blend and then the blender is able to deal with some parts of the food very well, and then it's unable to deal with another part of the food. That's a problem, right? Okay, good. So now that we've moved from nail pair or... Hi, yes, so Miss Mark. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, My face is... Hello, please, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Miss Mark. We can hear you. Yeah, please. Uh, my question has to do with the pre-diet. Yeah. I work... Yeah, yeah. I work in a facility where in New Zealand, where the the pre die Sometimes we have pear, pear or pea, and so I wanted to find out if pea or pear is a fruit that contains a seed or it is not. Oh, but you realize that the seed or the pear is so big that you just take the flesh <laughs> out of, around it and yeah. then blend it, and not the seed. Yeah, yeah. So we are okay, talking about okay. all those. Foods with like, like oranges and then yeah 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 seeds right so it's not like okay. so far as the fruits contain seed don't blend it no if the seeds if, if the basic thing is that don't blend it with the seeds that's it so if you can for pear you can take the big um yeah. seed out and then just yeah. blend it for the client yeah, it's very understandable thank you good okay let's go let's go with bland diet then so bland diets when you think about bland, bland is, ah, you know, bleh, like something without any taste, you know, nothing, nothing spicy, you know. So think about foods that do not irritate the gastrointestinal tract. Bland diets reduce gas formation. Bland diets reduce gastric acid stimulation. So when you're talking about bland diet, you are thinking about avoiding foods like spicy foods, fried foods, right? Pepper, alcohol, caffeine-containing beverages. Caffeine-containing beverages, alcohol, pepper, you know, spicy foods, they are not bland. Bland is like tasteless, like literally, right? Uh, you know, it is used with, for patients with Things like oesophagitis, gastritis, inflammatory bowel disease. Because, you know, these conditions, there's already inflammation. If you go and put spicy food, oh my goodness, ah, you know, it's burning the person's tummy. So, bland diet, no, don't put pepper, don't put alcohol, don't put caffeine-containing beverages, don't give spices, no. And you have to also know the conditions you want to give bland diets to oesophagitis, gastritis, inflammatory bowel disease. Please, is it making sense now, especially with the explanation? Because you don't want to give somebody with, you know, oesophagitis or gastritis something with spice. Oh my goodness, then that that then you really, really hurt the person. So as I said, oesophagitis, gastritis, you know, inflammatory bowel disease. Even clients who have gastric cancer as well. Gastric cancer. And even clients who have hiatus hernia. Why? Because, you know, do you know what a hiatus hernia basically is? A hiatus hernia is like, you know, um, the, the junction of the intestine and the stomach, of the, inter of the esophagus and the stomach, you know, as it goes through the diaphragm, Okay. Um, the, that, that space can be a bit big. And so you realize that part of the stomach can be sliding upwards. 
And you can at times have, and don't forget that the stomach has hydrochloric acid, right? And the esophagus does not have that. So if you have a client who has hiatus hernia and they take diet with spices and the rest, and they try to even lie down, the food can beat upwards and it can give them heartburns. So who do we give bland diets to? People with esophagitis. And esophagitis basically means inflammation of the esophagus, right? Whenever you hear itis, it means inflammation. So esophagitis. Gastritis means inflammation of the stomach lining. Like if you hear something like pancreatitis, it means inflammation of the pancreas. But of course, I'm not talking about pancreatitis and bland diet. I'm just explaining the concept of itis. So esophagitis, gastritis, inflammatory bowel disease, gastric cancer, and clients who have hiatus hernia. These are the people who can be encouraged to get a bland diet. Remember, with bland diets, don't give alcohol. Don't give spices. Don't give pepper. Don't give, you know, things which will hurt the bowel. And these clients... Esophagitis, gastritis, inflammatory bowel disease, gastric cancer, and hiatus hernia are the ones who benefit from a bland diet. And what are the foods we have to avoid? I've already talked about them, but repetition depends impression, right? Repetition, repetition, repetition. Remember, we are going for a board exam. So spicy foods, fried foods, pepper, alcohol, and caffeine-containing beverages. You don't want to give them in a patient who needs bland diet. Please, I need a summary. I need a client, I need, I need a participant to summarize for me. Bland diet, bland diet. Yeah, yeah. so bland diets are diets that actually reduce gas formation and gastric mm -hmm. acid stimulation. Beautiful. And they normally are given to patients with uh, uh, gastric uh, cancers mm -hmm. or patient with conditions like gastritis or patient with uh, conditions that actually uh, um, any any anything pertaining to the the that increases acid stimulation condition mm -hmm. that uh, increases acid stimulation and what, what? Uh, these patients we, we normally avoid food that contain caffeine alcohol oh, yeah. mm -hmm. or spicy like food. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, yeah I think uh, that's yes. so, <laughs> that's it. That's what okay. I sure. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sure now I'm drumming things into your brain. So now let's go to dysphagia diet. Dysphagia diet. Look, as we go through this, make sure you are really okay. taking the points one by one because we will be doing the mock after the class. Okay, dysphagia diet. So dysphagia diet. It uses foods with altered textures and thickened liquids. Who does well with dysphagia? Dysphagia basically means difficulty swallowing. Difficulty swallowing. So who does well with dysphagia diet? Clients who have swallowing problems and those who are at risk of aspiration. Dysphagia diet. Clients who have difficulty with swallowing who are at risk of aspiration. And we use foods with altered texture and thickened liquids. Dysphagia diet. Thickened liquids, altered texture, swallowing problems, risk of aspiration. Remember, risk of aspiration, we also can do nail, nothing by mouth, clear liquid diet, even full um, liquid diet as well. Now, there are levels. You know, in life, as we know, in everything, there are levels. Even in football, we have levels. We have the maestros and we have the common players and we have the Sunday specials as well. So in dysphagia diet, there are levels. So the first level of dysphagia diet is pureed food. That is level one. Please take note of this very well. Number two, level two is minced foods. That one, the, the size of the food is just about 0 0.3 centimeter pieces. And then we have ground foods. That is level three. That's 0 0.6. Okay? And then we have chopped foods. That is level four. That is 1.25. So 
So the way I remember it is I'll start with 0 0.3 and then I double it and I get 0 0.6 and I double 0 0.6 and I can get 1.2. All right. And then the fifth level of dysphagia diet is modified regular foods that are soft and moist with regular texture. Modified regular foods that are soft and moist with regular texture. So you have to learn the levels of dysphagia diet. Level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. And so if I give you an example, okay, I want a question. Which level is chopped foods? Chopped foods in terms of dysphagia diet. Which level is chopped food? Is it level one, level two, level three, level four, level five? Which which level, level four? Level four, beautiful. Level four. Minced foods is level two, right? So when you are sleeping and then we wake you up, you should be able to tell which level the food we are presenting to you is. And which foods should we avoid when taking dysphagia diets? You know, as much as we are learning the foods to give, we also have to learn the foods to avoid. So which foods should we avoid when a client is taking dysphagia diets? Number one, stringy foods, you know, because they can easily aspirate it. Number two, raw foods. Number three, dry foods. Because don't forget that at even the level five, and I'll take you back, of dysphagia diet, it should be soft with regular texture, soft and moist. So foods you want to avoid will be raw foods, dry foods, fried foods, you know, foods that are small in size or handheld, like popcorn and nuts and small candies. Because remember, this is for clients who have dysphagia, difficulty swallowing. If you have popcorn, it can easily, you know, get stuck in the, in the throat, and you know, that kind of thing. So that's something you want to pay attention to. Dysphagia foods, foods which are, which 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 you give to clients with this um difficulty swallowing, level one to level five, and you also have to learn the foods that you don't want to give: stringy foods, raw foods, dry foods, fried foods, and foods that are small and handheld. Now, if you need to serve a dysphagia diet. One thing you need to make sure is that the client's head is around 30 to 45 degrees elevated. 30 to 45 degrees elevated. Some people call it a semi fowler position. 30 to 45 degrees elevated. The head and the neck must be slightly flexed. And you want to monitor the feeding and reduce the risk of aspiration, you know, and evaluate the client's attempt at eating because this is for a client who has difficulty swallowing. So while you are serving the dysphagia diet, please make sure that the head and the neck are a bit elevated. All right? 30 to 45 degrees. And then know the foods you don't want to give. Stringy diet, popcorns, and the rest. So please, I need someone to talk to me about dysphagia diet. Dysphagia diet. Dysphagia diet. Talk to me. Talk to me. Someone, please, talk to me. Dysphagia diet. Dysphagia diet. Talk to me about it. Talk to me. I want to hear. Talk to me. Dysphagia diet. What 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 is the dysphagia diet about? Uh, it's about uh, these are diets for people that have difficulty swallowing. Mm -hmm. um, they're at risk for aspiration mm -hmm. and uh, foods to avoid would be stringy foods, raw foods, dry foods, fried foods, foods that are small in size, such as popcorn, nuts, candies, small candies. Mm -hmm. um, parade food, there's different levels. Yeah. Talk to me about so it. So we've got minced foods, um, 0 0.3 centimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm sorry, parade food. That's a level one. Level one. Mm -hmm. And then men's foods are level two. Yes. At 0 0.3 centimeters. Ground foods are 0 0.6. And mm -hmm. that's a level three. Mm -hmm. Top foods are 1.25. That's level four. Mm -hmm. And modified regular foods, soft and moist with regular texture. That's a level five. So, Susan, how would you remember the, the numbers from level two to level four? 
Uh, you said to just double it. Beautiful. Just keep doubling it. So 0 0.3, if you double it, it goes to 0 0.6. Six. If you double 0 0.6, it goes to 1.2, right? 1.25. Yes. Okay, good. Susan, by the way, how is the class going for you? Good. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> okay, sure. You're so, explaining uh, things very well. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You know, we, as I said, we teach we teach both doctors and nurses at Medcognito. So we have a doctor's stream and then we have a nurse's stream as well. So, yeah, I'm nice. very glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. Okay. So let's yes. talk about the soft diet then. The soft diet. The soft diet, who is going to benefit from the soft diet? The one who is going to benefit is, you know, soft. Why should somebody take soft diet and not, you know, something they, are, they have to crack and struggle with? If the person has dental problems, you want the person to take soft diet. If the person has oral lesions, you know, maybe all these painful oral lesions. If the person has difficulty sw uh, chewing and even difficulty swallowing as well. These are the people who benefit from soft diet. People with dental problems, oral lesions, difficulty chewing, difficulty swallowing. Let me say it again. Who gets to get a soft diet? People with dental problems, people with oral lesions, people who have difficulty swallowing and people who have difficulty chewing. And what are examples of soft diet? These are foods that contains small amounts of seasoning and moderate fiber content, okay? And these are foods that are easy to chew, easy to digest, easy to absorb. Soft diet. That is it. Soft diet. What are the foods to avoid in a soft diet? Highly seasoned foods. Fried foods. High fiber foods nuts and coconuts and i think you know the coconuts here you know we have two types of coconuts especially for me who comes from the tropics ghana um we have this soft coconut which is so soft that at times you put it in your mouth and boom it goes away and then we also have the very hard one so it's the very hard one we're talking about you know and foods that contain seeds because they can cause gi upset so when it comes to soft diet don't highly seasoned foods no Fried foods, no. High fiber foods, no. Nuts, no. Coconuts, no. Foods that contain seeds because they could cause GI upset, no. You should rather give foods that are easy to chew, easy to digest, and easy to absorb. And soft diets can also be considered as transitional diets. So when you see this uh, friendly fish who is jumping from one aquarium to the next, like it is transitioning from one point to the next, right? So soft diets can also be considered as transitional foods. And it can be used as progressive or transition diet, and it's a modification of regular diet. Soft diet. Soft diet. Maybe I'll go on to the next one, and then we can put soft diet and mechanical soft diet together. So mechanical soft diet includes all foods and seasonings in the form that is easily handled by the client. Okay. So what are the characteristics? It's soft textured, it is tender, and soft foods are all included in soft mechanical diet. Soft mechanical diet. Which foods are not part? Seeds, nuts, fruits, and pits. These are not part of soft mechanical diet. Soft mechanical diet. Seeds are not part, nuts are not part, and fruits and pits are not parts. Or fruits with pits. You know, they are not all parts. They are too hard and the client cannot handle them. So can somebody summarize soft diet and then soft mechanical diet? Just put them together and let's go. So remember that soft diet should be easily handled by the client. It is good for patients who have oral lesions, uh, which are painful, painful chewing, painful swallowing, you know, pe people have dental issues, all right? And you don't want to um, uh, give soft diets, cannot contain fried foods, high fiber foods, nuts, highly seasoned foods. And then the soft mechanical diets are foods that can easily be handled by the 
clients, right? They are soft texture, they are tender, chopped fruits. And they don't include seeds and nuts and fruits with pits, okay? So we're going to talk about high residue diets and then low residue diets. And I think that should be enough terminology for tonight. Because <laughs> I don't want to give you too much, you know. We we only touching on the most important things for the NCLEX exam. After all, it's an exam you're going to write. So we need to make sure that you are getting the best out of it. Okay. So high fiber diet. This includes foods that contain about 20 to 25 grams of fiber daily. And the essence of the fiber is to make the stool bulk so that the, can, uh, the, the, the client can pass it through the GI tract. High fiber diet, all right? Now, who takes high fiber diet or high residue diet? Clients with constipation, clients who have asymptomatic diverticular. So diverticular disease, you know, um, when the intestine is about to end up in the rectum and the anus, that part, that part of transition is what we call the diverticulum, okay? So we have people who have diverticulosis. I don't want to go too deep into that. But diverticulosis, and these people are asymptomatic. These are the people who need a high fiber diet because you don't want them to get constipated. If they get constipated, that can be a residue for disaster. Okay? And who will also benefit from a high residue diet when that client has alternating constipation and diarrhea of irritable bowel syndrome? So I've just introduced this particular condi condition, irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome, usually it's on a spectrum. You have people who have irritable bowel syndrome who are on the constipation spectrum. And you also have clients who have irritable bowel syndrome who are on the diarrhea spectrum. And you at times also have clients who have irritable bowel syndrome who are, who are in the mixed spectrum. So both constipation and diarrhea. So high fiber diet is good for those clients. And if you want to stimulate peristalsis, peristalsis basically means the, you know, that's movement of the intestine. That. And then it also helps clients to have regular bowel movements and to maintain normal bowel function. And this high residue, high fiber diet is also good to, you know, manage blood glucose, cholesterol, you know, very good for clients who have heart disease, diabetes, you know, high fiber diets, high fiber diets. So if you are sleeping and then I wake you up and I tell you, hey, please give me the features of high fiber diets. I'm sure you should be able to do that. All right. And which foods are included in high fiber diets? You want to include fruits. You want to include vegetables. You want to include legumes. You want to include whole grains in larger quantities or proportions. These are the foods you want to give in a high fiber diet. So high fiber diet. Now, let's go to low fiber diet or low residue diet. And then we'll bring everything to an end tonight. Low residue diet, the components can be, you know, white bread, cereals, pasta, and all these things, as I mentioned them, one thing is coming into your mind, carbohydrates, 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 carbohydrate. low residue diets. Think about high carbohydrate levels. So these are foods which can spike their client's glucose up, right? Cereals, pasta, white bread. If you, are, if you have been instructed to give low residue diet to a client, you know, you avoid raw vegetables, fruits, because fruits and raw vegetables belong to what kind of residue? Which please, which kind of residue is fruits and vegetables? Please. High high fiber diet. High fiber diet or high residue diet, right? So if you're talking about low residue diet, they are thinking about foods which don't contain vegetables, fruits, whole grains, plants, seeds, you know, um, and limits daily products intake to about two servings a day and low residue diets um also restrict fried foods pepper alcohol heavily seasoned foods the reason is because these can upset the gi tract 
It can upset the stomach. It can upset the intestines. So low residue diets. You want to look at it from that component. So when are you going to use low residue diets? When there's a narrowing or a scarring of the GI tract as a result of inflammation. So if the client has inflammatory bowel disease, if the client has partial bowel obstruction, if the client has enteritis, if the client has diarrhea, low residue diet. Low residue diet. Inflammatory bowel disease, partial bowel obstruction, enteritis and diarrhea. Low residue diet. So if you talk about high residue, high fiber, low residue, low fiber, pureed diet, nail per also nothing by mouth, um, clear. Um, we have gone through so many things. You want to use it, sorry? I want your feedback. How was the class tonight? We are not done yet. We are not done at all. I just want your feedback before we transition to the next stage. How has it been? Is it broken down the things or is it make things complex? Which is which? So far. I think how... it was good. Yeah. So it was good, right? Yes. What, what stood out for you in the class? Because we are going to uh, do <clears throat> class question answering, then we will do individual mock exams right now. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, what was good about the class? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I was spacing out there. Um, <clears throat> I, th I think the fact that uh, the way you're presenting it mm -hmm. and it's very visual with, um, it's very, uh, the wording is um, very bold. Mm -hmm. And then you're explaining it as we're going along and you're not going too fast. <laughs> so that's what really stuck out to me like you went into each diet um very detailed okay sure and yeah. it was it was very easy to take notes exactly exactly so now <clears throat> what is the essence of all that we are doing we are preparing for our NCLEX exam and so we should be able to address some exam questions so I'm going to give our two questions and we are going to solve that in class and then I'm going to give you a mock as well to do right away. So, multiple choice question. What is the primary purpose of a clear liquid diet? What is the primary purpose of a clear liquid diet? A, please type your answers in the comment section. A, it provides essential nutrients for clients with difficulty chewing. B, it adds bulk to stool and speeds rate of passage through the GI tract. C, it provides adequate lake fluid and electrolytes with minimal residue. D, it stimulates peristalsis and promotes regularity. Please, if it's A, if it is B, if it is C, if it is D, type your answer in the comment section. Because you've learned all these concepts. Now let's apply the concepts in an exam situation. A, provides essential nutrients for clients with difficulty chewing. B, Add bulk to stool and speed rate of passage through the GI tract. C, provides adequate fluid and electrolytes with minimal residue. And D, stimulates peristalsis and promotes regularity. So let me see the answers my dear RNs are writing. So looks like everyone is going for C, C. Anthony went for A, A. Anthony, we want to consider your decision again. A lot of your friends are going for C. So we are talking about clear liquid diet. Clear liquid diet. Clear liquid diet. And what is the answer? The answer is C. The yes. answer is C. Clear liquid diet provides adequate fluid and electrolytes with minimal residue. Clear liquid diet. Okay? So the rationale is that a clear liquid diet is primarily used to provide hydration, calories, and electrolytes without residue or fiber. And it makes it suitable for short-term use during acute stages of illness and or before and after surgery. So clear liquid diets. Clear liquid diets. Someone just, yes, okay. Anthony said, okay. 
So clear liquid diet, clear liquid diet, clear liquid diet. You should not miss a question on clear liquid diet. Okay. Next question. Mark the therapeutic diet with its primary indication. Remember that in the NCLEX exam, there can be drag and drop and all those things. So match the therapeutic diet with its primary indication. So if A goes with four, just write A4. If B go, you know, that kind of thing. So basically, you are matching therapeutic diet with a primary indication. So A is clear liquid. What is its primary indication? B is full liquid. What is its primary indication? C is pure diet. What is its uh, primary indication? And D is dysphagia. What is its primary indication? A, B, C, D. So I want you to match them. So each on this side must match something here. On the therapeutic diet side must match a primary indication. So is it A1? Is it A2? Is it A3? Is it A4? Is it D1? You know, that. I want to see the patterns. Pattern. Pattern recognition. Pattern recognition. Pattern recognition. So I see people saying A4, A4, A4. Okay. Let's see. I'll give you an opportunity. I'll give you time to do the matching. Let me grab some water. <laughs> So please do the matching, 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 guys. Do the matching, do the matching, do the matching. Okay. So, my diabetic diet with its primary indication. What are the answers? So those who went for A4, they are right. And B1. So A, clear liquid is for short-term hydration, right? A is clear liquid is for short-term hydration. Maybe let me even um, do this. Let's get this. So A, clear liquid is for short-term hydration, right? Is that okay? And then we said B1. So B, um, so B one, so B fluid, uh, full liquid is for postoperative transition, right? And then C, C two, period diet is good for people with difficulty swallowing, right? Mm -hmm. So let's do that as well. Period diet is good for people with difficulty swallowing, and then. Dysphagia diet is for people with um, GI disorders like gastritis. Awesome. So this is how it will look like. Uh-oh. So A4, B1, C2, D3, A4, B1, C2, D3. Does it make sense? So I've put the answer here, even making it clearer. So clear fluid, clear liquid goes with short-term dehydration. B, full fluid goes with post-operative transition. Um, period diet goes with difficulty swallowing. And this feature diet goes with GI disorders like gastritis. Okay. Now, another question. Which foods are typically avoided in a dysphagia diet? Which foods are typically avoided in a dysphagia diet? A, stringy foods. B, raw vegetables. C, whole grains. D, small candies. Which foods are typically avoided in a dysphagia diet? Select all that applies. So this is another question format. So they can give you, you know, this and it could be that all are correct, it could be that two are correct, it could be that one is correct, it could be that you know, yeah, three are correct. So, which foods are typically avoided in a dysphagia diet? A stringy foods, raw vegetables, whole grains, small candies. Which foods are typically avoided in a dysphagia diet? Hello, which foods are typically avoided in a dysphagia diet? And what is the answer? 
stringy foods are avoided, raw vegetables are avoided, and small candies are avoided. A, B, and D. Stringy foods and raw vegetables and small candies are avoided in a dysphagia diet due to the risk of aspiration. Due to the risk of aspiration. That is why we avoid stringy foods, raw vegetables, small candies. Right? Stringy foods, raw vegetables, and small candies. Please, how is the class going? Is it good? Good. Awesome. So, let's do a drop-down uh, uh, quiz. Or basically, you are going to fill in. A fluid, a full liquid diet is typically indicated for clients who have difficulty what and what. Difficulty what or what. Full liquid diet is typically indicated for clients who have difficulty dash or dash. You should be able to tell me this. Difficulty what? Difficulty what or what? Difficulty what or what? Difficulty what or what? Full liquid Swallowing. diet. Exactly. Someone said... Swallowing, chewing and swallowing. And swallowing. Chewing and swallowing. So, you know, somebody will say, oh, diet's easy, easy peasy. But unless you are guided to really know the various kinds of diets, then you'll not be able to ace the exam. Next question. Which foods are typically included in a soft diet? Soft diet. Soft diet. Which foods are typically included in a soft diet? Select all that apply. A, highly seasoned foods. B, fried foods. C, foods containing seeds. D, tender meats. And E, boiled vegetables. A, highly seasoned foods. B, fried foods. C, foods containing seeds. D, tender meats. And E, boiled vegetables. Which of the following are typically included in a soft diet? Select all that apply. Select all that apply. And what's the answer? Typically included in a soft diet are tender meats and boiled vegetables, D and E. Tender meats and boiled vegetables. We learned this in the class. Tender meats and boiled vegetables. So, soft diets include foods that are easy to chew, such as tender meats and boiled vegetables, while avoiding highly seasoned, fried, or foods containing seeds. Right? That is the essence of soft diets. Soft diets, examples of soft diets, tender meats, boiled vegetables. Tender meats, boiled vegetables.